This is the first time I've worked out. I'm not quite ready for all this right now. So what you have done so far to lose weight has not been successful. Um, I come over to help Robin every day. She has struggles with her mobility, and she has a hard time doing stuff on her own. Food is definitely killing me. My family is all I have left in my life. Number 10, Paula Jones. Paula Jones was one of the earliest people to share her story on My 600 Pound Life. When she appeared in Season 2, Episode 6, Paula was on a mission to shed significant weight off her 542-pound frame, both for her own sake and for the sake of her four children. At the time, it had only been a year since her husband had passed away, and along with the grief, she was struggling with her fears. On the show, Jones revealed her struggles with overeating began early on. After she was carnally maltreated at age 6, her wake-up call came when her husband, who also struggled with obesity, passed away at the age of 33 from weight-related complications. My biggest fear going into surgery is that they won't be able to do both arms. My sister-in-law talked to me about my lack of activity in Atlanta, and I've been thinking about it, and I've taken it to heart. 22 carbohydrate. So, Those are pretty good, right? No. Oh, sorry. It seems like I hit a wall when I'm working out and the world spins. Now I feel like I have to roll back those bad habits and show them the joy of eating healthy now. <sighs> this is the first time I've worked out. I'm not quite ready for all this right now. Working out for someone who's super obese is hard. I'm extremely out of shape. Something that I need to do. We'll see how it goes. Jones feared her four children would be left without a parent if she didn't change her ways. Their children being left orphans is every parent's nightmare, and Paula was determined to protect her own from such a fate. Like so many on the show, Paula moved to Texas in order to be closer to the weight loss clinic run by Dr. Yunan Nauzaradan, who would be assisting her through her weight loss journey. Jones made enormous sacrifices before she was justly rewarded. She moved her family from Georgia to Texas to be closer to Dr. Now and undertook an all-liquid diet to accomplish the initial weight loss required before going under the knife. Paula was successful in losing weight to qualify for gastric bypass surgery, but she suffered a couple of setbacks afterward. Although she had her moments of frustration, Paula pushed forward with the help of a therapist and personal trainer, as well as the support of her family. It's now been seven years since her episode on My 600 Pound Life, and Paula has remained steadfast in her new life and habits. Working out is a necessary evil. You only get better by doing it. It's kind of like math homework. Now I feel like I have to roll back those bad habits and show them the joy of eating healthy now. Savannah, at 11 years old, she weighs more than I do right now. So I feel like I can help her the most. As I work out more, my body should be able to handle it. Can I get a burrito and a couple ice? And that will delay my recovery even further. I really need to get this final surgery behind me. Now that I've mostly healed from my leg surgery, I'm looking forward to getting the excess skin from my arms removed. We're just going to warm up, and we're going to progressively go up in weight, and then we'll bring the pain. Okay, five more. Number nine, Irene Walker. Irene Walker who appeared in Season 9, Episode 11, also had a similar journey, riddled with many ups and downs. This made her quite well known among the show's fans. Weighing 603 pounds and 39 years old from Houston, Texas. At the same time, she was forced to move back with her son, niece, and daughter-in-law because her excessive weight didn't allow her to do anything on her own. The indignity of depending on others had sent her spiraling into a depression. The way out of her troubles required big changes, which she was finally willing to make. While introducing herself, Irene said that her daily life was such a struggle because of how her size had gotten. She was able to still get around and do some basic things for herself, like cleaning herself on her own still. So she pushed herself to do that, but it was hard. Eating was what she lived for now, which was sad to see since she had so much more going for her. What was more is how she had roped in everyone to help her fulfill her junk food addiction throughout her day. She had a lifetime of trauma to thank for her food obsession and self-destructive ways. It first began in her childhood, with witnessing her parents' separation at the young age of five. 
Irene said her father was abusive towards her mother, although the separation was for the better. It still took a toll on Irene, and her depression prompted her to seek comfort in fast food. This continued for the longest time, and she soon weighed over 250 pounds when she started high school. At school, Irene faced bullying and insecurity over her body, which further jolted her confidence. It seems abuse continues in cycles, and when she went 17, things only got worse for Irene, as she herself got involved in an abusive relationship, and the boy left her once she got pregnant. She dealt with it all with food. But within the next two years, Irene had to suffer through the loss of her father, mother, older sister, and aunt. Basically, her entire support system. The only support she had left was the food she used to forget her pain and loneliness. Irene became homeless and had to live in a shelter for women and children, but got evicted from there too. I really have to take a shower like twice a day in order to get very clean. And it's far not to smell. So I'm guessing the answer is you haven't really done anything up to this point. No, I haven't. And then I eat till I want to pass out. And then shortly after that, I just do that again and again. And I was devastated. And I, I actually lost my mind, you know. And I still think I just ate and ate because I was depressed. Either Trina or my niece would give me my first meal of the day. They know what I like and they just bring it. So what you have done so far to lose weight has not been successful? Um, it is hard for me to do things because of my weight. So I rely on my family. I did try a diet in the past, like eating salads and fruits. After getting pregnant with another child, she carried on overeating and gave birth to three more children after that. However, she slowly found herself embroiled in alcohol and drug abuse. But when Child Protection Services took away the custody of her three youngest children, Irene worked hard and became sober. From then onwards, it was a labor of love. She decided to get her life back by getting rid of all her addictions, including food, to regain custody of her kids. Thus, Irene approached doctor now for professional help, and she was assigned the task of losing 60 pounds in two months to get approval for bariatric surgery. Upon her next visit, it was revealed that she had only lost 5 pounds, because of which doctor now granted her another two months. However, Irene failed to follow up with the doctor, blaming it on the COVID-19 pandemic. The doctor nevertheless gave her another two months after she promised to get back on track. This time, Irene religiously followed her weight loss plan. She reached 535 pounds and ultimately got approved for bariatric surgery. Once Irene successfully lost around 68 pounds, after a total period of about one year and three months from her first meeting, she finally qualified for gastric bypass surgery. Dr. Now did say that he was proud of her for sticking to her diet and losing the weight at once, despite realizing the worth a bit late. However, Irene's surgery had to be postponed because of the nationwide lockdown that was going on at the time. She was asked to continue losing enough weight every month until the situation was relaxed. Regardless of the setback, Irene stuck to her guns. Irene continued to eating healthy and losing about 10 pounds every month thus maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Her bariatric surgery was scheduled in August of the same year. That's when I had Ja'Cory. But after, I got pregnant and my boyfriend broke up with me. When I'm eating, I feel good, I feel happy. You know, eating is what I do most of the day. It's the only thing to bring me the pleasure that I want. My daily life is such a struggle now because of how my size have gotten. And then I eat till I want to pass out. And then shortly after that... None of that helped me understand ways you tried to control your eating habits before. When I'm done eating, then like an hour later, I ask somebody to come give me some more food. Usually it's my niece Mimi or my caretaker Cameo that has to help me most. Because I know my family worries about me and wants to see things get better for me, you know? salads and no fried foods like bake. I'm still able to get around and do some basic things myself, like cleaning myself on my own still. They kicked me out because I got pregnant while I was there. And I tried to do what I could to make a living. Number 8. Robin and Garrett 
Robin McKinley and Garrett Rogers were an aunt and nephew who navigated their weight loss journey together, and their story was very inspiring. Robin and Garrett's entire My 600 Pound Life journey revolved around the theme of family members supporting each other. Not only did Robin and Garrett complete their weight loss journey together, but they also wanted to get healthy for their other family members. At the beginning of their My 600 Pound Life episode, which aired in 2019, Robin was 40 years old and weighed 648 pounds. Garrett was 20 years old and weighed 607 pounds. Robin sought help from Dr. Now. Her brother, Chris, who is Garrett's father, was supposed to be Dr. Now's patient as well. However, a heart attack left him too weak to make the trip from their home state of Kansas to Houston, Texas to see him. Garrett's love for his father was evident throughout my 600-pound life, and he was able to take care of himself while also being there for his dad. His determination to be there for his father sent him to Houston to get help. So, Garrett and Robin decided to go through this journey together instead. One of the sweetest moments was when Robin and Garrett went shopping for new clothes together after they lost weight. It showed how much they had achieved and how much losing weight together strengthened their bond. So I'm only going to have the strength and stamina to do this for a limited amount of time. I'm interested in your weight loss program. Okay, but good. You decided you want to as well. I come over to help Robin every day. She has struggles with her mobility and she has a hard time doing stuff on her own. So you're on track to be the world's heaviest person if something doesn't change. And even the weight of my arms to wash my hair wears my arms out now. So I'm only going to have the strength and stamina to do this for a limited amount of time. This episode had only one star, which was family relations. Garrett eventually moved back to Kansas to be with his father. The crunch came when Robin and her husband James joined him to spend the COVID-19 shutdown in Kansas. Dr. Now was very worried that their return to the place where they initially gained all their weight would cause them to have setbacks. However, in the face of a global pandemic, when other people were gaining weight due to being stuck inside, Robin and Garrett didn't falter. They stuck to their diet and exercise plan. They proved to Dr. Now that they had overcome their food addiction to the point that their environment would not affect them. Although they could not meet with Dr. Now again, they were able to maintain their weight loss. They both eventually had skin removal surgery in Kansas, and after four years, Robin weighed 223 pounds with a total weight loss of 425 pounds. Garrett weighed 227 pounds with a total weight loss of 380 pounds. The relationship? Husband, nephew. Okay. It's good to meet you all. Where are you all coming from? Even getting around the scooter, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm James. Okay. Yes, you, sir. And you are? I'm Garrett. All right, Danny. Everything is a struggle when you get to my size. You're 20 years old? Yes. That's a lot of weight gain in a short time at that age. Awesome. Straw for your drink. Thank you. Oh. Number 7. Chad Dean my 600 pound life season 3 was one of the most memorable centering around chan dean which was a success story of epic proportions he was one of dr yoon and now Zeradan's stellar patients to have thrived in his program which was touching to witness a 42 year old husband and father from maryland dean weighed 701 pounds at the start of his wellness journey he had a lot to live for but instead he was letting his life go down the drain his descent into his present circumstances came about in a number of years and were the result of eating unlimited food. Initially working as a chef, Chad had started to develop back problems that led him to seek work that allowed him to sit. As a result of his bad habits and decision, he could no longer work as a chef. So he switched careers and started working as a truck driver. Things were going on, but soon another obstacle came in his life when he got injured. His injury was the last nail in the coffin, and he could no longer work as a truck driver either. So I'm going somewhere today where I haven't gone since high school. The gym. I have kids that just want to spend time with me, and I can't. Aisha does everything. Next, Doc wants me to get under 350 pounds before he thinks I'll be ready for skin removal. 
I'm gonna work around the clock if I have to. Oh, good. There you go. Stretch. Food is definitely killing me. My family is all I have left in my life. To stay on track with the weight loss and the progress, it's like a full-time job. It's hard to be a father and a husband from a chair. Because I'm completely sticking to the diet and I'm constantly watching what I'm eating. My job is to get fit enough so I can get a job. Unfortunately, although a truck driving job kept him off his eat, it came with a price. Chad had found himself eating generally unhealthy foods due to his long hours and the ease of purchasing fast food on the road. So he had gained a lot of weight by keeping off his feet. Sequestered at home, he was unable to help his wife Aisha around the house. Rather, he had to be waited on hand and foot. He knew he needed to make drastic changes if he was to continue. After spending years nearly immobile and gaining weight rapidly, Chad decided he needed to take control of his health and sought help from doctor now on my 600-pound life. D, determined to no longer be a burden to his family, put in the work to get healthy. Though it was not an easy feat, his determination led him to shed over 50 pounds, and he was approved of bariatric surgery. Chad healed from his gastric bypass. All the while being on an all-liquid diet, Chad worked with Dr. Now and a trainer to get his strength back, working slowly to ensure his body was adjusting to his new normal. As he continued on his weight loss journey, his family cheered him on and worked alongside him. After dropping a total of over 400 pounds, Chad now weighs in at about 295 pounds. He works with a specialty trainer and follows a specific diet. However, he still has days when he finds himself feeling like he may spiral out of control. Thankfully, Chad doesn't have enablers in his life to let him backslide. No freeloaders are dead weight to keep this man down. I'm hoping that the doctors down there can help me. This is it. You know, a few months ago, I tried to go to a job to get in the truck. I couldn't get in it. I wasn't there yet. We checked into a hotel until we can find a home. But now my priority is to see the doctor. I love my life now. And things with my wife, just keep getting better. This is the biggest leap of faith we have ever taken. I went home and told Aisha about my job interview. She was proud that I tried, and she said I'll get it next time. And I really hoped that we didn't make this journey for nothing. I'm going to work to hit my weight loss goal, but I'm getting back to my life right now, and I'm going to be starting work soon. Hey, Quay. Actually, that's my water right there. To Quay carries the burden right of a parent at 10 years old. I knew walking in the gym, so it'll take time to get back to how I used to feel about it. A year from now, it'll be well worth it. Number 6. Vanessa and Megan The 1,000-pound sister spinoff. 1,000-pound best friends followed Vanessa Cross and her friend Megan Crumpler as they embarked on a journey to lose weight. Together, they weighed a combined weight of over 1,000 pounds, which had reduced their quality of life drastically. Megan and Vanessa had both been subjects in the series premiere of Too Large. In their episode, they both wanted to lose weight in order to qualify for bariatric surgery. Vanessa didn't get to the point where she was able to lose enough weight, but Megan, on the other hand, did and had weight loss surgery in the episode. Cross and Crumpler's episode 1,000 Pound Best Friends premiered in 2021. Megan explained in the 1,000 Pound Best Friends series premiere that she had lost weight since too large, but still wasn't where she wanted to be. She also revealed that although she should have lost more weight since her last appointment with Dr. Proctor several months ago, she doesn't think that she has. It's a common occurrence for bariatric patients to hit a plateau. Megan wanted to get through it rather than give in and accept the weight she had lost so far. Megan said she weighs 301 pounds at her last appointment. When she first met with Dr. Proctor again, she found out she weighed 329.8 pounds. To her credit, Megan told Dr. Proctor she wanted to know the best way to continue shedding pounds. While on the show, Cross, who was relying on food pantry to receive her food, struggling to lose enough weight to qualify for bariatric surgery while her friend, Rumpler, managed to lose around 40 pounds by the end of the friend's episode which was more than enough to qualify for the weight loss surgery that both women wanted to receive. 
Megan had bariatric surgery before 1,000 pound best friends. But during season 1, she was at a standstill with her weight loss. She weighed almost 500 pounds in 2020, then got the surgery and initially lost more than 100 pounds. Now it was time for her to continue the work, but that had proven to be difficult. Though she hoped to keep going with her friend's encouragement, her actions were contrary. She refused to weigh herself in front of her BFFs Vanessa, Tina, and Ashley and said she wouldn't be returning to see Dr. Proctor. I'm just stuck, she told her friends. Shockingly, when her besties tried to help motivate Megan, she stormed out in an angry rampage. Vanessa, Megan, Tina Arnold, and Ashley Sutton all took part in a fitness camp, which had them all exercising as part of their new healthy lifestyle. Are you not ever going to eat donuts again? Maybe in a few years when I get the weight down and I get... I need a side that tastes good. Well, girl, here's your taters. You know you love your taters. I'm going to be able to stick to this diet. It definitely is not easy. <sighs> it was a roller coaster ride full of laughs. Fun. This bunch of girls knew how to pump fun into a serious and painful journey, and they had their audience entertained along the way. Vanessa's weight had fluctuated widely throughout. In the last six years in particular, her weight had fluctuated between 350 and 500 pounds, which began with the demise of her husband and she used it as a source of comfort. However, she knew it was a lifestyle she couldn't continue because she was tired of feeling overweight, defeated, and depressed. It wasn't an easy road. She first weighed in at 441.6 pounds after previously losing 20 pounds six months before. The main man behind her progress was Dr. Proctor, who assisted her with her diet and exercise program and led her to success. Vanessa found it impossible to stick to a diet. However, she was sick of being fat and tired. Her weight was holding her back from being able to enjoy life, and her relationship with food controlled almost every aspect of her life. Once she set her mind to it, she got her amazing transformation. Motivated by the promise of a bright future, she decided to keep going and push herself out of her comfort zone, and that's when she started to see results. No matter how many difficulties she faced, she didn't use them as an excuse to give up or go back to her old ways. By making lifestyle changes such as cutting out soda and bread, she was able to lose 50 pounds on her own before she had bariatric surgery. Vanessa was proud of her progress, and her sense of confidence and self-worth skyrocketed, only propelling her even further on her weight loss journey. After several hard-earned weeks of determination, she managed to get under 400 pounds and was approved for weight loss surgery. Vanessa admitted that not being able to eat scarred her and claimed she was nervous ahead of the procedure. Though most of the spotlight fell on Vanessa, her friends weren't far behind. Some pretty spectacular fireworks were seen happening between the two besties, like the time when they were getting their heart rates pumping. Megan put a stop to the class after getting a splinter. Then, in the March 21, 2022 episode, Megan had another weigh-in and learned that she weighed 303 pounds, meaning her hard work was starting to pay off. In the end, Megan got the surgery, but Vanessa didn't qualify. There were plenty of opportunities for laughs on the new show, as the cross, Crumpler, and their friends Ashley and Sutton and Teen Arnold go on fun-filled camping trips outrageous exercise classes, and other adventures. With the support of Megan and her other two best friends, Tina and Ashley, she finally underwent the bariatric surgeries she had strived for. But I still have that. What if he says, okay, you're doing good. I see your progress, but you're not ready. 398 Ooh! pounds. Look at you, girl. Number five, Marla McCants. My 600-pound life has shared some of the most inspirational weight loss journeys, including the story of Marla McCants, who has completely transformed herself. Originally weighing in at nearly 800 pounds, Marla sought the help of Dr. Now in order to prepare herself for weight loss surgery. She managed to drop enough weight to be approved for surgery, and then had a successful operation and recovery with the help of her daughter, Sierra. After years of emotional eating, Marla had become bedridden and needed her children's help with everyday tasks. Her daughter, Sierra, had even moved in with her and traveled with her to Houston in order to help her mom. Although she tried to lose weight on her own in the past, Marla found herself unsuccessful. 
after giving all of her energy to her family. Therefore, learning how to function as an able-bodied person again was tough for the mother of three. But if you show them they can, they will usually start doing it on their own. But I'm still not able to get up and move around. And I'm still having to rely on my daughter, Sierra. I'm going to keep working and do this and make as much progress as I can. Not to see that you're trying and proud of you giving it a shot. I didn't think I could get up back so I can be here for my grandkids. But I still don't feel like I'm able to be in their lives. This is huge for me. I'm really excited right now. All right. After years of emotional eating and hard experiences that left her with very little motivation to succeed, Marla McCann's made a drastic change. She traveled to Houston to meet with Dr. Now. She wanted to finally conquer her most difficult problem. After her bariatric surgery, Marla lost a significant amount of weight. At first, she was still bedridden and struggling to move, relying on Sierra to help her with everything. Sierra became frustrated with her mother, believing that she was more capable than she thought. With the help of Sierra and medical professionals, Marla was able to stand up for the first time post-surgery. From there, she began to progress quickly. Marla shed weight fast by following her diet and exercising. Though her episode of My 600 Pound Life finished filming, Marla continued to make progress on her own. She kept making progress, and thanks to maintaining her healthy lifestyle, she looks very different today. It's been about nine months since I had my weight loss surgery. Getting up and standing is one of the most encouraging things I've done. And now, I still have cravings. I miss fried chicken. I'm trying to find a way I can eat that. And I know getting some of this loose skin removed would help out tremendously. Mm. Number 4. Laura Perez Laura's weight loss story is an inspirational one, to say the least. She kept pushing. It didn't let anyone or anything stop her. She even had to fight for her life at a point but she kept on swinging until she won. When she was introduced to viewers, Laura weighed 594 pounds and realized that she needed to embark on a weight loss journey. She struggled with mobility and needed to use a wheelchair with an oxygen tank attached. Unfortunately, like most of the cast members featured on My 600 Pound Life, Laura's weight gain was triggered by the difficulties that she faced as a child. She never shared with her parents that she was being carnally maltreated Instead, she turned to food for solace. Laura's My 600 Pound Life weight loss journey was not as smooth as possible, which made her perseverance all the more admirable. There was a complication during her bariatric surgery. Instead of a gastric bypass procedure, doctor now had to perform a gastrectomy. Come on in. How are you today? Great. Great. I'm not going to keep living dependent on anyone. With all the trouble between me and Joey, I don't want my emotions to send me running back to food. I have a big family and we all love to eat. And I want to keep becoming more independent and get a job and have a career. He doesn't want me to do that. I want to change, but I'm scared that I won't make it. <laughs> this past month has been extremely hard and disappointing. And I feel like I'm failing. I feel like I'm giving up on them. But I'm just really unhappy right now with how things are going. The surgeon removed four-fifths of her stomach due to her enlarged liver and spleen. Sadly, after the procedure, which was showcased on the series, she almost demised of pneumonia. However, she eventually recovered and managed to drop off a staggering 237 pounds by the end of her TLC stint. She eventually slimmed down to 182 pounds, which was one of the lowest weights recorded by a My 600 Pound Live star. Laura had a husband while she was being filmed for the show. He was introduced to the viewers as Joey. Joey and Laura's marriage seemed to hit a rocky patch when she started losing weight. He did not appear to like the fact that she was slimming down. Several other cast members have had family members that fans considered enablers. Joey seemed to be one of them and their marriage continued getting worse. She became more independent with every weight loss milestone she reached. The last straw may have been her decision to get a job, as Joey wanted her to stay home. He left her life, and she has finally moved on. And Dr. Nell said that they can't do surgery on a patient recovering from an infection. 
I know if I don't do something, I'm gonna die soon. I'm not 600 pounds anymore, so I don't need to be trapped. I worry about it, but I don't want her to know anything, so I just keep it to myself. I don't know what she goes through, but I've been with her for like 15 years, and I know what she goes through. I used to feel the same pain she does. Number three, Cedric Barnes. Since its launch in 2012, the My 600 Pound Life has featured astounding tales of weight reduction. Cedric Barnes was one of the most inspiring, who appeared in Season 9, Episode 2 of the show. Cedric Barnes appeared in the show as a 32-year-old weighing 740 pounds. He was from Florida and lived with his mother. He was totally dependent on her for his survival due to his weight. He barely got out of his house and was living in complete isolation. His only interaction with the outside world was only when the ice cream man came by and he could get his comfort food for breakfast. This was a regular thing as he also maintained a long-term account with the ice cream vendor and it was the only time of the day he got any exercise. We are pretty sure he was the ice cream man's ticket to fortune with how much ice cream he went through daily. What Cedric had to say about his daily ice cream treats was that the treats made it worthy for him to push himself to go outside. Though you wouldn't guess from his daily ice cream intake, Cedric struggled every day because of his size and also the lymphedema which developed in his lower body. He also suffered many growing health issues, leading to a sudden hospitalization, thus scaring him for his life. As he finally began realizing the amount of damage his excess weight was doing to his health and body, he decided to make the journey to Houston and meet Dr. Now. Easier said than done as it was a near impossibility because of his mass, because of his weight and excess skin around his entire body. If Tidri loses another 50 pounds, that may be enough to reduce the strain on his heart. Oh, nutty, nutty, buddy. I'm playing nutty, buddy. Okay. All right. Give me a minute. All right, Doc. What's up? All right, Cedric, you're doing better, and you lost 77 pounds. Cedric had a difficult journey lying in the back of his mother's van with the seats pulled down. However, he still managed to stop for fast food on his way. His mother sometimes also became an enabler, allowing him to gulp down junk food before seeing the doctor. After Cedric was given a strict diet, he initially had a tough time following every instructions and even missed an appointment with Dr. Now. He had to see the latter via video call. He also had to meet a nutritionist and learn about all the foods he was eating to know which food was impacting him negatively and why. For example, although fruits are healthy, Cedric was restricted from having them in order to cut any form of sugar. Although Cedric struggled for a while to lose weight, he later managed to lose 125 pounds and thus brought down his weight to 615 pounds. After such a triumph, Dr. Now was very happy and proud of Thedrick, and he was immediately approved for bariatric surgery. Unfortunately, when Thedrick was checked for any health complications before his surgery, the doctors found that he had a weak heart, which made the surgery risky for him. As a result, he was asked to lose some more weight before he could get approved for the surgery. Thedrick continued losing more weight after his time on the show and did a phenomenal job at it. In fact, he ultimately did get a permission for surgery from the doctors. Cedric brought his life around due to the combined efforts of an entire team at his disposal, but the biggest chunk of those efforts came entirely from him. Number 2. Jasmine Ragland For years, Jasmine Ragland had relied on her mom to help her get through the day because at 604 pounds, her size limited her mobility. But after learning that her mom had multiple sclerosis, Raglan had a new motivation to lose weight and become the person her mom can depend on. I need to get my life together, so I'll be able to help her, said Jasmine Raglan. While she relied on her mom to help her throughout the day due to her size, the 36-year-old single mom from Detroit told audiences she'd always been fat. She was bigger than her sisters and her brother. Things got so bad that one day, she decided to not just go to school anymore. The problem was that it was just a really big school, and she had been tired of walking around the school. You don't want to be fat and overweight and have to go through the things that I go through, right? You want to be fat like me? 573 ha. pounds. You did it. Ha! I knew you could do it. <laughs> you really are. But it does give me some motivation to lose the weight 
I need to get my life together. One leg at a time, whatever you gotta do. You, you can yeah. walk through it too. There you go, there you go, good, good job. I noticed my weight becoming an issue probably in middle school. Get it, girl. We had a family workout. Go, Jazz. You got it, sir. Work it out, work it out. There you go. My sister, Latricia, she helped me with whatever I need help with. You know, if I need help in the bathroom or help cleaning, if she brings junk food in the house, then she will hide it or put it up so I won't see it or it won't be around me. So she would just skip class until she just stopped going. Thus, by high school, she just left it. 20 years later, she had become dependent completely on her mom. But her multiple sclerosis diagnosis had been devastating, and it was clear that Jasmine needed to step up and become the caregiver. She knew the roles needed to reverse, and to be a caregiver to her mom, Jasmine needed to drop hundreds of pounds. Jasmine hit her milestone, and Dr. Charles Proctor did her gastric sleeve surgery in October of 2020. She's now down 300 pounds from her heaviest weight and still at it. Jasmine Ragland's not only surviving, but thriving after getting life-saving surgery on too large. I want to do everything. I want to travel. I want to be fully independent as well. But due to the weight, if I get approved, then I'll be getting my surgery in a couple days. So I'm feeling a lot of pressure. I got us some breakfast, some sausage eggs and pancakes. And have you some um, juice with it too. Here you go. Yes. I she did good on the road. She did good on everything. Yeah. That's right, son. At least she tried. That's, That's right. right. Big, beautiful woman. Which one are you? I am an SSVVW. <laughs> <laughs> Why you got so many hearts? I don't know. They mean you love me. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm having my son, I did gain weight, and my mobility has gotten worse. Number one, Justin McSwain. At just 27 years old, Justin McSwain was struggling. He had gained nearly 400 pounds in just four years, putting him at 687 pounds. And because of his size, he could no longer go to an office and work. The young college graduate from South Carolina was once had his whole life in front of him, was housebound and barely able to perform basic activities like walking around the block. McSwain's addiction to food began as a child. When, following his parents' divorce, the youngster found it hard to fit in with his father's new family. By 14, McSwain was more than 200 pounds, and by the time he reached adulthood, his time was more than halfway over due to his immense weight gain. McSwain was left beating himself up for letting his weight get so out of control that it left him struggling to breathe at times, unable to complete ordinary tasks. He developed debilitating anxiety and agoraphobia and had all of his food delivered so he didn't have to go outside and that food wasn't limited to healthy proportions by any standards. Despite knowing how much harm his love affair with food had done him, he didn't know how to stop. It was clear he needed a plan of action to get his life back on track. And who better than Dr. Nauza Radan to do that? Justin McSwain uprooted his life in South Carolina to visit Dr. Yunan Nauzaradan in Houston and became a legend in the process. Perhaps one of the most memorable moments were of him struggling to fit into a rental car to make his way over to Dr. Nau's office at over 700 pounds. And to see a three come up before my weight is amazing. So I hope Dr. Nau is happy with where I'm at. I have a little over a month before that, and I don't plan to let up even for a moment until then. Can you go and see if there's anything bigger? And ask about making you a driver. Okay. So my next big goal I'm working towards is to lose enough weight to get skin removal before that gets a lot worse for me and starts to be a bigger issue. That's excellent. You're doing great. How you feel losing all that weight? Uh, incredible. It just makes it all worth it. Adopting a healthy lifestyle wasn't easy for Justin, who had a shockingly tragic first weigh-in, initially hoping his weight would be in the upper 500s or lower 600s at least, he was devastated when the scale showed 687.5 pounds. He had to lose 92 pounds before the legendary Dr. Now would even consider working on him. The meeting with Dr. Now had pumped new life into McSwain's existence, and he has determined to turn his life around. And boy, did he do that. He didn't let go of his eating out ways, but instead of going for deep fried goodies, he switched to grilled proteins and started treating sodas like they were his personal kryptonite. And it worked. Happily, by the end of his time on My 600 Pound Life, 
Max Wayne had lost a whopping 334 pounds total. Now 30 years old, Max Wayne has lost more than 450 pounds and has become a resounding success story coming from the show. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.